of God's glory. Long as we live, we will give honor and praise to God. Let us now stand to receive the family.
then disappears tomorrow. All that we are can quickly fade away, replaced with tears and sorrow. If a man should die, can he live again? And at this time, we'll have the opening song, He Will Call, Song 111. Thank you. 
This time we'll go by the obituary, a brief talk with prayer, Brother Joseph Lewis, the uncle. Death is all around us. People are dying every day for one reason or another. And then you feel the pain and the hopelessness uh, when it comes to uh, someone that you love. See, and, and that's because there's nothing that you can do about it. And, and the thought of not seeing that person again is even more painful. And, and that is what we are experiencing uh, right now, as we uh, mourn the death of Jordan, uh, many of us we like to we like to call him Rudy. Now, Jordan was well loved. Uh, he was raised around Jehovah's Witnesses, and uh, he was uh, he was he was good at sharing the kingdom message with, indiv in, with individuals, as Jehovah's Witnesses do, and sharing the magazines too. He's real good at that. And as he as he grew older, his grandmother would study the Bible with him and uh, he would uh, attend our Christian meetings. And um, he uh, would make a, he made a, a lot of success. Uh, and um, and in in um, in, um, in his service. Well, he um, he expressed this. He expressed his desire to become an unbaptized publisher. Uh, he met the requirements and uh, he was approved and um, he, he joined the school. And as Jehovah's Witnesses, the school that we, that we are on is one in which it teaches us uh, how we can share the Bible with individuals. So he was making good progress. And now, he uh, he enjoyed what he was doing, but he got to a point where uh, he ran into a few problems, and it kind of it kind of slowed him down. He he recognized it though, and so by the time he reached about um, eighteen years old, um, he he spoke about his uh, renewing his uh, his resolve to serve God, to serve Jehovah God. Now, what kind of person was uh, was Jordan? Well, when you meet Jordan, you loved him. Right? He was always outgoing and energetic. <laughs> In fact, that's why they called him Rudy. You know, I, re I remember when he was a little kid. He was four years old. I came by and I saw him, and he was on a bike that was bigger than he was. You should have seen it. The bike taller than he, but he was riding it. And I said, boy, that's Rudy, you know. And then uh, a lot of older ones, you know, uh, uh, they remember they remember they remember Rudy because of the because of the kindness that he that he showed them. And uh, many of them said that they remember him, they loved him because he always gave them a hug. Right. So, Shorty, uh, 
we're going to miss. All of us are going to, going to miss. All of us who know him are going to miss Grudy. And, and the, the family, uh, they, would, uh, they would appreciate all the comfort and thoughts that, uh, that you might have uh, in their uh, time of grief. Um, I want to apologize a little bit because uh, uh, Rudy was one of my one of my nephews, and uh, during the summer, they were, they was here in Petersburg. But my wife and I we lived in we lived in uh, Baltimore. I mean not in Baltimore, I'm sorry, in Maryland, Oxford Hill, Maryland. And every summer they were always they would come down and they would spend the summer with us. So during the summer, Rudy was my son, him, him and his uncle. And so, so I feel a little uh, choked up uh, a little bit. But uh, we talked about the family grieving. Now, all of us are, are, are grieving, and, and there's nothing wrong with grieving the, uh, grieving the loved one. It's just, for example, um, notice how, notice how uh, Jesus responded when he heard about the death of his friend Lazarus. Many of us might, might know about that uh, that situation. But notice this. This is at John chapter 11, and, it, and it's verses 33 and 30 through 35. And I'm going to read that. It says, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews had come with, her, come with her weeping, he groaned within himself, and he became troubled. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And then watch this. Jesus gave way to tears. So you need you notice how Jesus responded. He groaned. He felt troubled, and he gave way to tears. And so this this showing that it is normal to grieve the death of our loved ones. And so you might uh, you might wonder if God whose name is Jehovah, does he cares about the pain that we go through or when we lose a, one, a loved one? How does he feel? Is he concerned about the grieving that we go through? Well, well, notice what the Bible says. I'm, I'm going to read that. It's at Psalms 147 in verse 3. It says, he, that's God, heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. Now you notice that he he, he mentions the the uh, broken hearted. Now that refers to those who are overwhelmed with grief, right? And notice too that it, that it mentioned that he he heals them and he binds their wounds. So this tells us that Jehovah God is concerned about the death of our loved ones and that he promises to comfort those who grieve. But you know, when God created man, death was not a part of his original purpose for mankind. And, and let's look in the Bible and, and, and see the story about how, how Jehovah God created the first human couple and then take note of what he said to them. It says at Genesis 2, 15 and 17, it says, through 17, Jehovah God took the man and he settled him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and to take care of it. Jehovah God also gave the command to the man, from every tree in the garden, you may eat to satisfaction. Watch this. But as for the tree of knowledge of good and bad, you must not eat from it. For in the day you eat from it, you will certainly die. Right? So did you notice what the Bible says is the reason why we die? Death came about because Adam and Eve disobeyed God. But now, now, think about that, though. Think about that. If Adam and Eve had not disobeyed God, what would life be like today? Think about that. Disobedience brought upon death. 
So had he been obedient, what would life be like today? See, that is what God wanted for us, right? That's what he wanted. He wanted us to live forever right here on the earth. But because of that disobedience, um, that, that was taken away. But is all hope gone? Well, let's, uh, let's look at it. We have a video that we want to show. And that, and that's, that video is going to, it's going to show the hope that God has promised uh, to those who have died. With one act of defiance, mankind became lost. Alienated from the life that belongs to God. Sin and death have become inescapable for every human born on earth. With the exception of one, Jesus Christ. He used his God-given powers to heal sicknesses, feed thousands, he even resurrected people back to life. Jesus performed many miracles while on earth. But are they simply a collection of stories from the past or clues to something far grander? A glimpse into a wondrous future? A future where God will satisfy the desire of every living thing. The real life that God promises to each of his faithful servants. How can this beautiful future be possible? Because of what Jesus did for us. He came to earth for a purpose. He gave his life for those he loved. The curse of inherited sin and death could now be lifted from each one of us. If we look intently to Jesus, we will no longer be lost. He will show us the way to the Father.
Now, isn't that a wonderful hope that Jehovah God has provided? So by means of that resurrection hope, God gives us an opportunity to see our dead loved ones again. Though we grieve now, we mourn the loss of our dear loved one. God has promised by means of the resurrection to bring that one back to life. And he's given us an opportunity to live to see that. But the question is, will we take advantage of the opportunity that God provides? Being here at a funeral, it reminds us of just how short and uncertain life is. We can be here today and gone tomorrow. And so the reality of death should cause us to think about how we are using our life. See, if we live our life by God's standards, to his delight, he will grant us the privilege of living life the way he originally meant it to be. Not dying at all, but living forever. See? And what was Adam and Eve? They were right here on the earth. Not only will he give us the opportunity to live forever, but again, we will have the hope of seeing our dead loved ones again. So, if you would like to learn more, Jehovah's Witnesses offer you the opportunity to learn what the Bible says and to develop faith in what God promises. Thank you. I'm just gonna conclude this part with a brief prayer. Thank you, Jehovah, our merciful God for being a comforting God and a merciful one. We ask that you comfort Daisha and Kay and the rest of the family. We want to thank everyone for their support of Jordan, who was truly loved. Father, we ask that you keep Jordan in your memory. And as was brought out, the hope of life here on earth that you put before all of us, may you please, Jehovah, strengthen us in these days ahead. We know that through the sacrifice of your son, Jesus, that we can even have a resurrection and a hope. So Jehovah, we thank you for that. And may we not make light of it and exercise faith in uh, your son. And it makes us think of your faithful servant, Job, who asks, if a man dies, can he live again? And we know, Jehovah, that you are sure to those words that you will resurrect those ones that you love. And just like then, Jehovah, you assure us of our hope to see our loved ones again right here on earth in a paradise. So as we move forward in the days ahead, may we continue to give support to the family in this time of hurt and, and tragedy. And we look forward to, well, really, we love you, Jehovah. I think that can't be said better than that. So we thank you, Father, and we give you this prayer through your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And that concludes this part of the program. Amen. We want to thank you, too. And then at this time, they have the uh, eulogy by Pastor Rashawn Hill. Then after that, then we had the refle reflection, a two-minute Reflection, and then after that, they have a song from Rodney Stiff, and then do a care, Mr. Stiff, to his final resting place. Can we clap our hands for the life of Jordan at this time? I believe a lot of the things that has been said through his uncle, that he has come and he has shared some wonderful things concerning him. 
and it's an honor to stand here as another young man at the age of 19 to funeralize a dear brother who has now transitioned from earth to his resting place. But how many of you know that this is not the end? This is only the next step to his next destination. The train came by and picked him up and he answered the choo-choo when it came and he got on board and he said, Jehovah, here I am. And I give reverence to his mother in her hour of grief. I send my condolences to you on the behalf of Petersburg High School and all of the classes represented here to support your son. But today I want to come out of the book of 2 Corinthians 4. And I known Jordan as Braceface. I called him Braceface because Jordan had braces. And I used to see Jordan all the time in school and I would see him walk the hallways and he used to come to me all the time. He said, preacher, I need a pass to class. And I would say, Jordan, if you don't go to class, I'm going to call your mama. He would say, no, you don't know my mama, preacher. I said, by the time I get through with you, I will. But one thing I knew Jordan to be, he was very respectful to people, and he smiled all the time. And he taught me a valuable lesson as a young man. If you don't know how else to get through, smile through it. And, and though he was Jehovah Witness and I was who I am, he never let his, his religion stop his friendships. He did not allow his religion to stop him from loving whom he loved. He did not stop his religion to say, well, because I'm Jehovah, I cannot be your friend. He was one of those that said, I respect your religion and mine, but let's be friends. And, and I known him to have the understanding that even in his time of his transitioning, there were some friends among him. And no matter how many friends was amongst him, no matter what Jordan went through, he smiled through it. And even at the hour of his time of his passing, I believe even as he was transitioning, he was smiling because he knew that this Jehovah God he has been serving, his life will make way for him wherever he goes. And so I came to the understanding as I was sitting at home and I was saying to myself, I said, well, God, this is an 18 year old young man who has now transitioned from his earthly vessel to his resting place as you are over in glory, preparing the mansion for him, wherever you see fit to put him in that hour when the hour come. And I had an understanding. So I went to the Bible in second Corinthians four. And I went to verse 13 and it says, since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what has been written, I believed. And so I spoke, we also believe. And so we also speak knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, though our outer self has wasted away. Our inner man, the inner man of Jordan, was renewed day by day. For this light monetary of Affliction that has come and it has touched this family it has come and it has touched this community it has come and it's touched this district this is just a light affliction this is just something that only lasts for a moment but if we live right and we do right show sure enough we will see jordan on the other side and this monetary affliction is preparing us for the eternal weight of glory. But I cannot receive the eternal weight of glory until I understand that this is only a light affliction. And if I understand that Jordan's life and in his hour of his transitioning was just a life of a moment of an affliction. But now as we're preparing to lay him at his resting place, he's preparing for the next weight of glory, which is to come that he could not get here on the earth. 
Many times we want to receive all the glory of God here upon the land of the living. But how many know there's a greater place than this that we're living in? Because if this was the final place, then we wouldn't have so many shootings. If this was the final heaven, we would not have so many young folk dying day after day. If this was the final place to live, we would not see our mothers and our fathers bearing their children before their children can bury their mother and their father. We would not be at this place. But how many know that this is not heaven? This is just a stopping stool for us to get our lives together. This is a stopping place to meet the man called Jehovah Jireh. This is the place to stop and meet the man called Jehovah God. This is the stopping place to meet the man. He did not say I will see the man, but I stopped here to meet him. And how do you meet him? God, here I am. I surrender all. Here I am, I surrender this moment to you. God, I don't have to be living in the streets to know that you are a God. I don't have to serve this life as if I know it all, if I know you are the all-knowing God. But all I need to do is to realize that this thing called life is a moment of afflictions. But when I get to the place called the grave, oh grave, where is thy sting oh oh grave where is thy victory oh death where is thy sting for death is swallowed up in victory and if death is swallowed up in victory and we who are here still has life and life and the bible says let everything that has breath praise the lord but many times we have breath but are not enough things many times we have enough breath but not a much i love you mother we have many enough breaths, but we don't have enough time to say, Daddy, I love you. Many times we have enough breath, but we don't know how to get rid of some friends that don't mean us no good. I wish I was talking to some believers. Many times we have enough breath, but we don't know how to separate the loved ones from destroying our families than to destroying our futures. We don't know how to use this thing called breath. We breathe and we breathe what we choose to breathe. We breathe what we think is going to help us when really it's destroying us. Jordan had breathed enough smiles that in this hour he made sure if you're going to remember me, remember me in a good way. Don't remember me in a way that I wouldn't want my mother to know I was living. Don't breathe and love on me the way my daddy would not love me because the mother's touch is better than the touch of a girlfriend. The mother's touch is better than the touch of anybody else that could touch me. A mother's touch will heal some things. A daddy's voice will kill some things that ain't supposed to be around his son or his daughter. But if we learn that this thing Death is only a moment of affliction because we serve a bigger God. We serve a God that when this life is over, I'm flying away to see this God we've been serving. Many times we serve God, but we don't have the real love for him. And, and I'm learning in this life as we bury so many of our young ones that I ain't got time to love family. I need to love on God a little bit more because it's going to be him that's going to deliver me in a time of affliction. It's going to be him that will be able to cover my mother and my father if I make it to this route before they do. So what are you saying to me, preacher? I'm glad that you asked, church, because I want us to understand that while you're in this, remember, it's only for a moment. While you're in this, remember, it don't last always. I can't stand here to tell you it's going to be all right because I have not sat in your shoes to know. I can't tell you that it's going to heal tomorrow because I'm not Jehovah. I'm just a servant of his. But what I can tell you, if you lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him, he will direct thy path but the bible says in the book of romans for the sufferings of the present time is not worthy enough to be compared 
to the glory of the Lord, which is to come. He said, I stand close to the brokenhearted. I stand close to those who are wounded. But you got to know who you're standing with. And remember that you're trying to get to one place. And it costs you to give your life to him. If you want to see him again, you just say, Jordan, this is not the end. This is I see you later. This is not goodbye. It's if, son, I love you enough to say, I'll see you later. And if we learn that in this hour, as time go on, love this family. Don't love them today just because it's a home going. Love them even when they cannot find the faith to get through. Love them even when they say, my son is gone. I don't feel hope. For the Bible says he stands close to the broken heart. Right now, he's in the process of healing your wounds. But you got to know that Jehovah is bigger than the wound you have. And then as time goes on, for time waits for nobody. But in this season that we're in, remember that this is a light affliction i encourage my young men that are here today if you don't know about the jehovah jireh the jehovah god we're talking about they to ask somebody that's going through something that know about them they need to take the time out and remember that every day you wake up and breathe life is him that gives you that touch that is him that is keeping you here even in your sinful days even in your mistakes he still grants you life when we really don't deserve it but he said i will look beyond the thoughts of what you think and i will give you life and life more abundantly but when this life is over you're gonna have to fly away from here this is not a permanent home it's only temporary so everything in our lives are not permanent. Don't make temporary moves without a permanent savior. And don't make permanent decisions in a temporary place. Because when this is over, all of your permanent decisions will fly with you. And all you have is to know, am I going to heaven or am I going to hell? But if we do what the video said and trust in him, Adam and Eve may messed up, but they still had a chance to get it right. Because at the end of the day, God still has a room for you in his house. And if you live right, and you do right, we will see this dear brother by the name of Jordan Stiff one day in glory. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that God will cover you in this hour. Mother, keep your head lifted that you have shoulders to cry on but when they shoulders get heavy remember that God was waiting for you to lean on him God bless you praise God praise God and then at this time we're going to have a reflection and it is limited to two minutes and if it's over two minutes I don't mind pulling that coattail it's okay that's it Family have been going through enough already, so we don't want to linger any longer. So if anybody want to come on up, you can come on up. Down at this time, we're going to have a song by Rodney Stiff. Why he had to go i don't know he would say i said something wrong now i long for yesterday how do i 
say goodbye to what we had the good times that made us laugh outweigh the bad I thought we get to see forever but forever is gone away it's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday I don't know where this road is going to lead. All I know is where we've been and what we've been through. Ooh. I thought we get to see tomorrow. I hope it's worth all the way. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. I thought we get to see tomorrow. I hope it's worth all the way. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. It's so hard to say more kittens. Let us all stand except the family. Life like a mist appears for just a day, then disappears tomorrow. All that we are can quickly fade away, replaced with tears and sorrow. Should die, can he live again? Here's the promise God has made. He will call, the dead will answer. They
Then dear so 